what does Russia still want with Ukraine? I mean, it's the biggest country in the world as it is. What's this fascination with Ukraine? Why are they willing to sort of draw the ire of the entire world once again to get into a country like Ukraine? So from the Russian perspective, certainly that of a kind of a Russian nationalist or patriot like Putin, Ukraine is an integral part of Russia and has been at least since the 18th century, if not, again, if you want to go back even further into kind of the mists of time, some fundamental part of, of Russia in its, in its identity. Um, Ukrainians obviously view this a little bit differently, uh, both um, in terms of a kind of ethnic identity. There are differences of religious faith between the Orthodox Church and the Unionate Church. And quickly, from like someone like Putin's perspective, what does Ukraine bring to Russia? What, what's what's the advantage there? Is it uh, resources? Is it easier navigation to Europe? What exactly would be the, the sort of what do you think the main reasons would be that Ukraine is valuable, other than you know the shared history? Oh, well, I mean, there are all kinds of things. We're talking about strategic geography, obviously, kind of land bridge to Europe. You also have the Black Sea, Russia and her famous lust or lack of warm water ports, that is, lust for warm water ports or lack of warm water ports, although now Crimea is effectively being, of course, administered by Russia, and there is a there is a literal bridge to Crimea. There isn't The land bridge is still, of course, controlled by Ukraine, and so you have access to world markets. I mean, in the late days of the Tsars, this meant uh, grain and wheat exports and the imports of industrial inputs and equipment. Um, I mean, these days, a lot of it, of course, has to do with oil and energy resources and pipelines, and one of the big reasons they're talking about Nord Stream 1 and 2 up in the Baltic is that that allows Russia potentially to bypass Ukraine. But of course, Ukraine has traditionally served as a conduit for Russian energy exports population. Mm -hmm. Even if Ukraine's population is kind of declining these days, it's still a, a robust country uh, at the time of the fall of the Soviet Union, close on 50 million people. So you, right. you lose 50 million people, you've lost a lot. I mean, the, uh, my old mentor, Norman Stone, had a great phrase about, about Ukraine and Russia. He said that with Ukraine, Russia was the United States. She was a superpower. Without Ukraine, uh, she is Canada, mostly snow. And that's perhaps an exaggeration. Obviously, Russia has a larger population, more resources, nuclear weapons, etc. It's a, a much more powerful country than Canada. But that said, you see why you lose 50 million people. There was, of course, uh, negotiations over the parts of the nuclear arsenal that were in Ukraine. You have naval bases, a place like Sevastopol. You have hugely important cities, port cities like Odessa. Um, and obviously, the industrial base, uh, the Donbass region, resources, everything from, from coal, of course, to, to iron, uh, a lot of heavy industry. Um, it's obviously a, a hugely important part of what had been the Soviet economy and, and was somewhat disrupted, of course, after the fall of the Soviet Union. And, and ever since, mm -hmm. there's been this kind of ongoing tug of war over whether Ukraine will be reintegrated into Russia and the Russian sphere and economy or whether Ukraine will try to join the West. And this, this tug of war obviously has been playing out in ever more violent and dramatic uh, fashion over the past eight or nine years, especially over the past week.